Welcome back to the Sports Blog on the Greater STL Sports Network. A little technical difficulty is my dog there decided to trip over the line. You can't do that around this little area I got set up because the technology these days is so great that you just reset. But anyways, we'll get back to the story we were talking about. Is it's uh, about the Kings Highway Bridge and something that's really just like seems so happy to be St. Louis and just the fun of living here and all that. But on Saturday, to the joy of St. Louis commuters, the Kings Highway Bridge was reopened and heard regular street traffic for the first time in 22 months. As the last week we know, the bridge reopened required a buzzy bidding effort by city workers who apparently were still laying down asphalt as late as Saturday morning. Only they missed the spot. Indeed, it appears that at some point Saturday morning, workers paving a portion of Shaw Avenue near the north end of the bridge were confronted with an unexpected obstruction in the road, a blue Kia hatchback. But the car was in fact parked legally. Somehow, not a single person had thought to put up a no parking sign before the final push of the massive construction effort. And that apparently ruled out calling for a tow truck. So an example of classic engineering elegance, the workers simply paid around the Kia, leaving the vehicle on a sunken rectangular island. And a great picture on Twitter from uh, Robert Cohen. And he puts up here's the car got in the way of the final payment of St. Of today's opening of the King's Highway Bridge. Hashtag SDL. The workers literally paid around. Literally work. The, the workers literal work around. First publicized in a tweet by the post dispatches photograph of Robert Cohen. Left Twitter and the St. Louis subreddit with the reactions ranging from. Accusing the car driver of being an asshole to the, obli- the blig- obligatory only in St. Louis. Am I right? The sight of a lone car caught the eye of caught the J. B. Anderson. Probably, oh, the sight of the sight of the lone car also caught J. B. Anderson off guard. The corner of Gaslight, a hybrid bar recording studio. Anderson showed up to work Saturday morning and says he initially didn't notice anything odd about the vehicles parked across the street, and he did a double take. He said it looked at he I looked at it and. It was so indicative of other projects that Anderson haven't opened Gaslight in March 2016. The bridge construction has consistently been frustrating a fact of life for his business, particularly in the past few months when the work turned the stretch of Shaw into a cul-de-sac. The paving company was probably on fire to get it done before Saturday morning, Anderson said. Just a few hours later, right along after Mayor Linda Cousin led a procession along the mostly completed bridge, the keyest driver, a woman, reappeared. My guess is that it was a partner, partner out of the bar who couldn't drive, didn't want to drive, whatever it might have been, Anderson said. A guy dropped her off, pulled up in front of the car, and she kind of got out and stared at it. She then drove away in what appeared to be a mild embarrassment. Yes, that's the fair reaction. We probably do the same. As of Saturday afternoon, the slab of road remained unpaid and never changed St. Louis. And this is an update from 430. St. Louis is a small town, and only a few yards after the story was published, we got an email from one of the other driver, from one none other than the driver of the Kia. The woman who asked the Renee Mailers added a few critical details to this tale. First of all, she wants everybody to know that she wasn't too drunk to drive, and this wasn't a walk of shade situation. What really happened Friday night was less far from dramatic. I was flying back from a trip, and my plane was late, and I was supposed to meet my boyfriend and some other friends to a drink. We took several cars because I was coming straight from the airport. As mentioned before, the street bear no signage to warn emergencies that the area was due for a fresh coat of asphalt the next morning. I actually asked a couple of people walking by it if it was actually a parking spot, he said. She, see, it turns out this is a good citizen and not, as one of the posters in the sub St. Louis subreddit suggested, an asshole. When she and her boyfriend did arrive, they decided to leave later that evening. They decided to simply simplify the travel by taking one car. We do it all the time in St. Louis. Just leave your car, come back the next day. She said it's not a big deal. Of course, when her boyfriend drove back to the gas line on Saturday, the trooper car, they finally saw the construction workers had well. We were both like, this is ridiculous. This only happens in St. Louis, she said. Obviously, I would have parked there if there would have been a sign that they would not even take the time to block off the street or put signage up. We're saying we're paving the road, and instead they would pave around the entire vehicle. It's just a serve. No arguments here. And that's from the Riverfront Times. And that's the St. Louis for you. Hey, they got it done. They got it reopened. No complaints. You gotta be happy for drivers, but just to know that there be no signs up or anything like that just tells you how great St. Louis is. Is there was such a rush to get it done that they didn't even put signs up. That they just said, "Hey, fuck it. Nobody will park here because they see that we're working." And of course, somebody parked there and. 
hey, let's just pay around it. It'll be done. Now they'll go back and pave it and stuff. And it's just funny to see a story like that. Hilarious, really. But I can't imagine like being in that situation, come back the next day, and if seems that basically your car is basically blocked off from the rest of society. You're just some driver that's traveling around and you see your car and uh, parked on a bridge that's being redone and they just paid around it. And you can't fault the driver for that. You know, you're out, you're trying to do something with some friends, trying to hang out for once and look what happens. It, you get stuck in the middle of a bridge project. And it, it doesn't it's just, it's just, it's just St. Louis through and through, and that you have to rush for everything in St. Louis makes no sense. Like, it doesn't make any sense that that bridge wasn't done in a timely matter. In two years, it constructed an overpass bridge. It's just a, a stand up. I mean, it's kind of like what they did with the whole Highway 40 situation when they, it took them years and years to get that done. And, and it's still the same way. 270, the same thing. They blew up all that traffic, and it's just, they added more lanes and made it wider, and it's just still the same old traffic. And they just can't stop things like this, and it makes zero sense. Now, if you see today, the maker of Fahrenheit 9 11, which was basically a movie against George Bush for his, I guess, ploy in the 9 11 fair. He's going to make a movie now called Fahrenheit 11.9, which is basically he's saying is going to stop Trump's little whole president thing and say that this guy can do anything and not get ruined. Well, this is going to ruin him. And I'm not going to talk much about it other than say, this guy doesn't stop. This Michael Moore guy. Now, he's put things out there where the people actually kind of believe. And he's made movies about Trump and stuff before. So it's just funny to me that he thinks he's going to be the guy to pull down a guy that hasn't been pulled down by anything he said, anything he's done. Anything. And most people are right there with him and agreeing that Trump should be taken down. But it's kind of hard to stop Trump in this situation. <laughs> he, they, I mean, he's done everything wrong, essentially. And nobody can stop him. And this guy thinks he's going to, you know, he, this is what cocky happens to cocky people. They think they're so much better. I'm going to make a movie about Trump going doing this to Russia, blah, blah, blah. People, it's not going to work. And it's just funny that people actually think it's going to work. And it's, 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 you think you can take down a whole presidency. And, and you see it on Twitter. You're like, even you guys I like on Twitter, I'm not going to lie about it. I said the same thing. Well, I'll stop talking about him when he jumps out of office because he hasn't done things right. Well, he's not going to do it, people. Get over yourself. You're not going to make it any different by going out here in the podcast and saying Trump sucks. I don't make no difference by going out here and defending Trump. And I'm not really defending him because I don't know nothing about politics, but I know enough to know that nothing has really brought a president down since even Watergate. So you're, you're making an ass of yourself just to go out there and try to say you're defending your country and really you're just trying to make a thing for more people to go out there and watch your movie or retweets or whatever. You feel better at yourself. Just stupid people. You only make a stupid decision. As usual. But, you know, it's, I watch it. I'm not going to lie. Just for the fun of it. I watch Fahrenheit 11 for the fun of it. I'm not saying that any of it's right. And... You see most of these claims where some of these movies get later on after the years when people actually figure out what the hell is going on. They're wrong, and they'll get proved wrong just like everybody else will get proved wrong about thinking they could take down Trump. Or maybe, you know, maybe he knows something we don't know. I mean, he's got to be in the know with some of the stuff he gets. And it's kind of funny, some of the stuff he gets, and where does he get it from? He's just a you know, piece of shit movie maker. So it's kind of, it's just something that... You know, a way to make money. That's all I can say. And I'm going to pay it to him. And you see if Dana White said that on this uh, McGregor, McGregor Mayweather fight, that their deadline was Saturday. Well, he's changed that already. I think he's just trying to keep yourself in the news. And, you know, he's going to make, the UFC is trying to make money off this, and they're going to make big money. Supposedly there's agreement to where 
McGregor's going to get 75 mil, and there's been things that said that UFC wants like half of that, and they probably won't get it. But you know, if you can't make any money off this in UFC, you know, put words in that 20 to 30 million dollars, you can't be too commentary about it. But he was off Sports Center, and this is something he said when he uh, appeared on there. And of course, we're as usual having technical difficulties. I always like this. Technology is so good. But he, he, essentially he's saying that he made a contract here. Let's, and as soon as it gets to work and I start talking. Around here. And we gotta run through an ad again because I was I played through the ad. Just having a good night. You know, the last few sports plugs were real fun. You know, we did the other night with the girl from the this meeting, you know, that like you mentioned it and then people said that it was some deadline and then you clarified yesterday it's not necessarily a deadline, but you would like to meet with Connor tomorrow. Has that happened? We're not meeting. Um, we're right there to get this deal done. You know, we just got to get the deal done. I would like to get it done this Sunday and uh, start, start negotiating with Team Mayweather. And, you know, if that deal can get done, then, then we'll get it done. And if it can, I need to move on. So I guess when, 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 when you say you're the, right there with Connor, is just something like a simple phone call can, can, can yeah, do it yeah. then? You guys are yeah, I think, I think we're there. I mean, uh, Connor and I have agreed on a deal. A deal. You know, then you get, then you get a bunch of lawyers involved and, you know, get stupid. Okay, so it it should wrap up with Connor tomorrow. It seems like you're confident with that. So then, have you scheduled like penciled in a meeting with Floyd? Yeah, well, as soon as it's done, um, we 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 go to work. And he's he's Floyd is aware of that. And you guys are meeting in person in Vegas on Monday. Yeah, it'll be it'll be me and Heyman. Okay, in Vegas or Cleveland or Vegas or L.A. It just seems like listening to you talking, all of that, that we would have to go into it. Like, a reasonable person would think there's no way it can happen this year, but you think it could happen this year. You it's either going to happen this year or it's never going to happen. Happen at all. This year or yeah. never. Yeah. Okay. This isn't something that I'm going to spend a bunch of time on. Like, I'm going to dedicate the next three months of my life to. Yeah. And is that how Connor feels as well? Like, hey, I want this, but if it doesn't come yeah. together, I want to. Connor fight. wants to fight twice this year. Yeah. Yeah. So for him, almost a deadline would seem like pretty soon. I mean, because if this thing is not going to happen, you wouldn't want to offer him a title fight. I would. Yeah, it feels the same way. He wants to fight twice this year, and one of those fights to be Floyd, if possible. Now you see what he said there. He changed his whole attitude about everything because they're going to make money off it. And you see that it's kind of nice to hear that they're actually working on it. With saying he's saying he's right there. That's probably the biggest news that anybody's heard in a while. And you gotta love technology. You gotta listen a little bit as it went on and off. And I had fun there. But you see, how, I just love how cocky he is about the whole thing. Like, oh, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on it. Well, you, that's what you've been doing for almost the last year since Gregor brought it up. You're the one spending time on it because he's under your contract with you. So as long as he wants it to happen, and. You're gonna make money off it. You're gonna stick to it because basically, I kind of seems like he's at a point to where it's his way or the highway. If you can be under, you can have him under contract all you want, but some of these fighters seem to not care for them under contract, which is kind of funny that you know he's not he's not he's not the big head honcho of UFC no more as they sold it, but he's still a main guy, and he can be as cocky as he wants, but it's not gonna be like. It's not his deal, I and mean, that's what he, he just wants to make money off it, and that's what nobody understands. Is that's all he's there for, and he's being a negotiating, negotiating, negotiating team basically, and he's the guy that wants to get this done because it's gonna make bring money to him. And I don't know what he, I guess, I don't know what he has to do with the Mayweather thing. Maybe he's gonna try to make somehow try to figure out to make money off the of Mayweather too. And, a lot of, and it was funny because I said something, I read, or excuse me, I watched something earlier from Oscar De La Hoya, who acts like he doesn't know 
if it's going to be a UFC fight or a boxing fight, and that's going to hurt Burke Sports because if he goes in the ring at UFC, this is going to happen. If he kind of goes in the ring at boxing, this is going to happen. It's going to hurt both sports. What's going to be a boxing match? And I'm not, I know I'm, I should have a whole is a big famous boxer and all that, but what, who is he the one to say this is going to hurt? This could put boxing on a whole different level than it has been. What does he think boxing's at right now? Boxing's in a cellar. Like UFC ain't the type thing, no top thing anymore, as much as it was. People have gotten over that real quick, and the social media mafia have probably been top gauge in that. But like, how you gonna? How's he? And he's a fight promoter, and that's what he he doesn't want it to happen because then it takes away from. The money he's making because he's not involved in it. So, for him to say that it's going to hurt both sports, it, you can't hurt boxing no more. There's, there's nobody, no people aren't watching boxing. And you still get, there's still people involved in other states, but you're not you're not in the situation that you were when Oscar De La Hoya was fighting, when he was fighting the Roy Joneses of the world. It's not the same sport no more. This is only. For boxing on a whole different level because now you're bringing it to a whole new sport. You're bringing USC guys in to kind of forgot about boxing. And then with the USC, you're bringing boxing guys in. Wow, this guy can fight. Maybe this is a different kind of thing that we thought it was just a, bl a blood sport. Maybe this is something different. See, the people like that just doesn't, they want to keep it what they say pure. He doesn't, he. He's making money, so he doesn't care what if it happens in Oscar Del Hoyo. But he's not making no money off this, so he doesn't want it to happen unless it's someone involved. But he he doesn't understand what he's not understanding is you have to find a way to expand your sport when you're in the rut the boxing is. And they're hoping they don't it with this new guy Joshua that's beaten that just beat Klitschko. You finally got an American guy winning the heavyweight title. But is it, was that really a big of a fight when you, you're fighting a 95 year old Klitschko, whatever one it was? I mean, they were under the sport for the last, it seemed like, 10, 15 years. I mean, they're still sending guys, like, they're still running big fights with guys like Bernard Hopkins. And how long did they run on Holyfield? I mean, you don't have the names in boxing that you used to because of UFC. Now you could bring that sport and them fans into your new, they make your sport. As most people want to say now, great again. But at least better, at least have some kind of fan support. For, because they're, they're stuck. Boxing's been stuck for three, four, five years now. Probably longer than that. You, you had it big with, when Klitschko was there. First started out, but he's not the big guy anymore. And you had it there in the Tyson. It's really been ever since they've lost guys like Tyson and Lennox Lewis. And they, and you know, you see Lennox Lewis didn't really string it out like Holyfield did, or like a Bernard Hopkins said, Roy Jones didn't do the same thing. And the UFC brings kind of character to the sport. And you don't have the characters either. It's almost like the sport, you got to have certain kind of characters that people want to watch your sport. you got to have the guys like the Ron Artest of the world. The guys that go and like get involved in the social media wars that have fun, the Conor McGregor's of the world. And even people in wrestling are doing it. I mean, wrestling's not the sport it was. And I think the UFC is going to tap into that, too. Which boxing should, too. They they kind of did it with Floyd Mayweather, but I think with when you have a face like a Ryder Rousey or something like that, that you maybe should get yourself involved in that kind of thing. But for anybody to deny that this fight's going to, saying it's going to hurt, it's not going to hurt nobody. When you look at a guy like in the wrestling we're seeing, you, you don't think that wrestling fans want to see seeing him a punk fight? I mean, he lost in a minute, but you don't think that they somehow gained fans? You don't think that it happened with Brock Lesnar? You don't think that people knew who Bobby Lashley was and he's still fighting for Bellator, that it happened with Bellator? Boxing hasn't needs a jump start. And they haven't had it yet, and this could be it. So for anybody to say that this, is, this shouldn't happen or this can't happen or whatever it is, and he tried to play it off like he didn't know what it was going to be. It's going to be he's like, oh, like a fight in the octagon. This is the stupidest thing I've really heard about it. But Dale Hoist or like fighting in the octagon or like fighting in the, 
the boxing ring. I, I don't know. Look, you do know because he said he wants to box Floyd Mayweather. And that despite Floyd Mayweather's age and how many in the fifty fights that he's had, it's not gonna matter because you're you're putting the lightning around your sport in the Kyrie McGregor and you've already in you that your your big sell right now is sport. That's it. And maybe this guy in the heavyweight division has a title now, maybe he doesn't. But I mean, dang five boxers right now. You know, last fight that people remember is this Chavez Jr. Barlow fight, and you know I didn't watch most of it because I boxing's not fun anymore. You don't. There's no household names. There's nobody that promotes like they used to. I mean, look at some of these. Go watch some of these weigh-ins of the UFC. I mean, people are fighting at the weigh-in. You don't think that attracts fans? I'm not saying that they should, but you're not getting the spotlight in your sport like you used to. And they're trying to do it with the premier boxing on NBC, which didn't take off like it was supposed to. I mean, ESPN with the Friday Night Fights, you don't even see that stuff no more. So for them to be... To not want this fight for boxing, you don't have to want this fight to happen, it's kind of stupid. It, it really doesn't make any sense to me. Because if I was a boxing person, you know, a promoter, I would want this fight to happen. It puts something in your sport. So now they're going to try to figure out some of these guys. Try to make some household names. And like, wow, you know, boxing is still fun. Yeah, and that's, that's what this is going to make it look like. A guy like McGregor coming from the UFC, I mean, that people are actually trying to make boxing, di you know, different than when it's been somebody just punched somebody with the boxing glove on. And that might not make other people, they go, they want to go to the UFC or want to do other sports. And like, well, I maybe I can go boxing. Maybe it's something I can actually make money off of. Because you, right now, you only got three, four, five people making money off boxing, I promise you. And go look it up. In the heavyweight division, you know that the Klitschko is the only ones really making money. They weren't fighting anybody and anybody knew. Well, all the fights you want, but you're not going to make money off somebody you knew. You make a little bit of this TV money that they got. But you're going to go out here and be able to charge people $100, $150 to watch a damn pay-per-view for one fight. That brings light on your sport, whether how much it costs, because people are going to want to watch. And then, hopefully, I don't know if it's just going to be a one-fight thing, like UFC did that one time on Fox, where they just had one championship fight. You see what happened after that? It was ruined. And pe you know, people were like, what the hell? The first round knockout. So he sat here and waited for all this. Well, hopefully, they, you know, you get some spotlight on some other boxers, and you can build on that. And you won't need a guy like a guy coming from the UFC. You actually, people actually see other fighters and want to see other fighters and see how it all works. I don't, I don't see why boxing hasn't tried it yet. It hasn't tried prom prom promotion with the UFC like the WWE has. I don't know who made that decision. But it seems like it's, it's worked for probably both sports. You're putting a light on your sport. It hasn't been there. The light's been off. You look like some, compared to UFC, you look like some done, well, here's UFC, Trump Tower, and here's you, Motel 6. And the lights not on no more. You're one of these hotels on the side of the road on the outskirts of Las Vegas that people aren't going to anymore. That's what you are. So for anybody to shit on it is ridiculous. And of course, De La Hoya is a promoter. He doesn't want to see this. Because he's out there trying to make boxing better in his own way. And, you know, pure boxing people probably don't want to see it. But it doesn't matter anymore. You have to put some on your sport, or you're gonna lose all the interest in your sport. There's, I mean, in other states, maybe like in New York, but I, New York and stuff like that, maybe it's still big, but it's not big in the Midwest. It's not big. I used to live in Arizona, I don't, and, and it was a long time ago, and I don't remember anybody talking about boxing. You know, this was when first USC was first coming back. It's not the same sport. You can't just sit there and be do the same thing over and over. It doesn't work. Look at baseball. I want to try to speed up the game to appeal to other people. You have to appeal to a new audience. Because the old boxing peers are all 80 years old and dying off. So you have to put a new light on your sport. And really, all three of them need it. UFC, wrestling, and boxing. You should be crossing the as much as you can. 
to gain new fans and put a new light on your sport. But I hope this fight happens. He said if it doesn't happen this year, it's not going to happen. He's lying. It's, he's going to make it happen, whether he has to or not. And that's that's the thing. He can be cocky all he wants and try to you know put his name in the news, and that's great. Go him. But I'm telling you right now, he'll, he'll happen. All right, let's go to what I missed. No. <laughs> but let's go to the second we haven't had in a while. Weird news. All right, this is from the New York Times. And a simple, a simple plan. It was a simple plan. A college student would crawl through an air duct at a building housing and a sh- instruct- into an instructor's office in the wee hours, lower himself from the ceiling, and with the help of cohorts, steal a copy of the final exam for a statistics class. This episode unfolded around 2 a.m. on Wednesday at the University of Kentucky campus, spokesman Jay Blatton said. One of the students, Henry Lynch's second, had made his way through the duct at a distance of less than 10 feet to the third floor of instructor John Kane's office, Blanton said. Lynch made his way from the ceiling and lowered himself the 8 feet to the floor. Once inside the office, Lynch opened up the door for another student, Troy Kipluth, and I hope I said his name right. And it's not clear how long the two were in office before Mr. Kane returned from going to grab a late night meal and find out something was blocking his door when he tried to open it. He threatened to call police and the two students ran outside. Not long after the police arrived, Lynch, concerned that Kane would be able to identify him for his class, returned to the building and confessed, said the spokesman. Lethan Caputh released charged with felony burglary and they're scheduled to be arraigned on June 26th. Lynch also told police that he had entered the office around 6 p.m. on Tuesday but did not find the exam. He also told authorities he had stolen another exam earlier in the semester but did not share the answers with other students. Blanton said. In both cases, he gained access through the duck. No action has been taken against the students as of Thursday through the university of student conduct will be investigating. Blanton will not discuss potential consequences, but said cheating and theft of any kind is very serious in an academic situation. Adding that episodes like this were a rare at University College of Arts and Sciences, which has 10,000 students. It was an unusual set of circumstances, he said. It also underscores how late our facility works. Now, you don't plan on teaching being there at 2 o'clock in the morning. It's a good idea. I mean, if you're going to get through the ducks and you ain't got to worry about security. I mean, smart kids. I mean, you're in a university in a statistics class, so you're obviously smart. But smart to use the ducks, but what do you check to see, you know? I think I figured these plans would go on for a while. Like, do you, know, do you not know? Like, do you not know his schedule? Like, how it worked? I just, I don't know. All right, this is a story from the mirror.co.uk, and we'll talk about this. No, when a man, when a twenty, when a man, when twenty-six, when a twenty-six-year-old Tara Mikachik on a stag tape, and when a man's, I'm messing the story up. When a man found twenty-six-year-old Tara Natasha on Snapchat and Millie started sending her new pics, she decided to get revenge for all women who have been treated this way. He added her to the app around 1 a.m. and immediately started and immediately sent a selfie and two photos of his penis. Alongside the photos, he sent a message saying, I want to F you. Love to F you out as well. She replied, Fab, and he asked her if she'd be up for that. Tara said she said, we start crash the response, yes, of course. But when he actually thought she was being serious, I was like, she said, I was like, I have you now. He sent her another photo saying, you like what you see, huh? I know I'm not small, in an Eber Jean emoji, whatever the hell that is, and then said a one with a caption across his penis that said, where you want to meet. So intense was the onslaught of naked photos and creepy messages, Tara thought she'd pay him back. So she gave him a postcode. He asked if there was a parking, and she replied, yeah, plenty of parking, babe. It's all gated, but I'll budge you in when you get here. He didn't get it when he got there and... Stephen sent her a photo of a pic of a gate. He was approached by Alfred who told him he could not park where he was and asked if she would, if she really lived at Buckingham Palace. When he didn't get the joke, when she sent him a pic of the queen, she decided to end the joke and sent him a pic of her in the bed laying with her friend and said, hey, we're 200 miles away. He did not take it well and started sending her abusive messages. I think he would actually drive there. Common sense would have told you to put the postcode in and see it was Buckingham Palace, she said. Bitch. This, no, I'm just kidding. This shows you guys, never, I don't think I've ever done that. Ever sent, I don't know, like, is that a big thing where guys send emojis, you know, send things to their 
send dick pics. That's what it is. I mean, do guys do that kind of stuff? Like, is that, like, really a thing? Like, I don't know. I never, like, even thought about doing it. Not that I care if my shit gets blasted all over the place, but to do it and, and then, you know, I think a girl's up for I can't the girl come meet you at least. You know, if you're, you know, because most girls are smart, but, you know, after that girl said enough bug, you know, let's go to fucking, you feel bad for the guy almost. No, I'm joking. Stupid people do stupid things. That was, of course, Buckingham Palace, which is where the Queen and, I guess, Prince Charles and all them people live. And they call it post code. But when you do things like that, don't you put an address to find out where you're at in this situation? So when she sent them to it, why didn't you just, you know, actually look at it? And look at it actually, say, you know, here, this is what it's all about. No, he he actually, like, didn't even think about doing that. He actually just went and went right there, you know, the ass, you know, when he got there, didn't even look, you know. It's just something he's, like, when you formed with the Buckingham Palace. Like, did you not think that you were getting played? Like, that's that's the one thing that I want to know. Like, I'm pretty sure if I rode up to Buckingham Palace and a girl, like, sent me there, I knew I was getting played. Like, that's how quick he thought. Like, he was actually serious. And that's just funny to me. And it's It's... It puts me in a whole different world to think that people are actually like this. All right, moving on from Yahoo knows baby of the Associated Press, which the Associated Press is going to be big on the show today. But a Florida sheriff's deputy is out of a job after he waved his fire on a stun gun while calling lines from the Digital Washington character in Training Day. <laughs> this is hilarious. Randall right Center reports Lake County Deputy Dean Spice was fired April 21st. Authorities say Smites rode his pistol and taser together in the direction of a convenience store at a front of a place trainee. An internal affairs review said the action replicates a scene from the movie, and Smite told investigators he was trying to be funny. And, of course, I lost my thing here. Anyways. An investigative affairs review said the action replicates a scene from the movie, and Smite told investigators he was trying to be funny. The report says Snipes twice pulled his firearm in an officer setting, but his racial slurs made a motion to draw his firearm at a pastry delivery boy, and became upset after not receiving star free Starbucks coffee. And there's something wrong if you're quoting Train Day when you're a cop, because it's not probably the best movie to replicate. Definitely when you're a cop. But just the Is he really mad that he like they have donuts at Starbucks? Like I never been to a Starbucks because I'm straight. So, does he, does he really think, like, was he mad that he didn't get coffee, or was he mad that he didn't get dumb up? That's, that's what I want to know. I guess, you know, true story. Like, I was playing a game the other day. Um, my kids downloaded the game on the PlayStation. Big city stories, blah, blah, blah. But, like, you know, you go to the, you have to do missions. It's kind of like a, a mini version of Grand Theft Auto that kind of appeals more to kids. And it's kind of like Grand Theft Auto mixed with the, uh, the old Sim City games where you're kind of building the city and things happen, blah, blah. You steal cars. You can't really do as much as you can in Grand Theft Auto, and you can't really build the whole city like you can in Sim. But it's kind of a mixture. That's just something to do. But, like, as an officer, you really think that, like, nobody's going to see that? Like, nobody's going to report it? And, like, you're not very smart if you're going out there, you know, doing the training day thing. I don't think that... Like, if they meant for that to be a real movie. Like, for real cops. Like, this fun. Give somebody something to do. A movie to watch. I don't think that you keep your job by doing these things. And you say he's trying to be funny. Well, I don't think... I think there's something mentally wrong with you if you're doing that. But it's just, it's just funny. And cops, you know... I got I bet more cops do this and get away with it than anything in the world. So, cops get away with it a lot, so who cares? I just also feed with the Associated Pulitzer from stladay.com. Kansas City man pleaded guilty to a duping dozens of women and having sex with him on camera by telling them that he was rehearsing for roles and they were rehearsing for roles in pornographic movies. The U.S. Attorney's Office said Mario Antonin of Raymore pleaded guilty to one kind of wire fraud and be sentenced to 10 years in prison on the terms of a deal he agreed to Friday. He will also be required to pay restitution to his victims. 
homocysteine, homocysteine, except for, except for September 13th. Antoine, 34, created online aliases as a talent manager, photographer, videographer, and claimed to work for a fictitious companies in the pornographic industry. Investors say he promised to pay the woman thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars. Prosecutors say that when a woman complained about not being paid, Antoine forwarded the message of such sexual activity to employees and significant others. Now, if you're a connoisseur, or just have a fascination, not a fact, appreciation, you see this kind of stuff on Pornhub. Or any site. Backroom castings one if you know your board and want to look something up. Because I think he would have thought he was going to get away with this. Like, people weren't going to know. Like, the girls weren't going to say nothing. And then he got a federal court charge. I mean, that's crazy. And, I mean, I don't know how what they do. I don't know if the girls get paid in these certain kind of situations on, with the porn hub thing that's on there. They probably get something out of it. They probably got to sign something. Dude, you got to make people sign something. But, you see the stuff on the internet. You probably just think you can get away with it. Like, great idea. But, you got to have something that backs you up. And, I, I, I'm telling you right now, that's where you got it from. If you've seen the guy's face, you've seen what he looked like, that's where he got the idea from. He's watching a lot of porn, I promise you that. But I don't see what people think they can get away with this. I mean, you see this stuff all the time with this stupid fake stuff, but I don't see where people get the idea that they can get away with this. Just because it's on porn, how do you think you can get away with it? You don't know that porn's fake? It's just like wrestling people. He's probably an avid wrestling fan too, but you know, that's where he thinks that's real too. And not, not saying nothing bad about wrestling, but you know it's fake. You're, if you're not, if you're smart enough, you know it's fake. But because he thought he was gonna get away with this, and probably got the idea from watching porn. I'm telling you, that's where he got it from. Because backroom casting, just to let you know. Just look up backroom casting and porn when you get bored. All right, from this is also from STL today. Our last story: a fake nurse who stole the identity of a real nurse spent three months working on a St. Louis hospital in the high, hospital's ICU and elderly, elderly psychiatric unit. She. Worked with patients, changing doc, charging documents filed in federal court claim and claim. Samantha, Samantha L. Riviera, 35, has never been licensed as a registered nurse in any state, never graduated from nursing school. A May 10th indictment claims Riviera now faces charges of health care fraud and identity theft. Riviera, who lived in New Mexico and St. Louis and now lives in Illinois, was in court for a brief hearing Friday. U.S. Magistrate Judge John Brodelhausen told Riviera in court that lawyers did not know if New Mexico authorities wanted her held on charges issued last month there. All my court records show fraud, forgery, and identity theft charges were filed April 21st. Riviera, who worked at St. Lexius Hospital in St. Louis from November 2016 to February 23rd, 2017, but the hospital did not extend her contract. Riviera was caught after she applied for another job with a nursing staff company in Chicago. Using the information from a real nurse in New Mexico. The company learned that Riviera was not licensed in New Mexico, but had been disciplined by the Board of Nursing there. Investigators said have since learned that Riviera applied to Blount Mackey College in Albuquerque, falsely claiming she had a master's degree in nursing from Georgetown University and had previously taught a pediatric nursing class at the University of New Mexico. Neither of the statements were true. <laughs> she was hired in September 2015 as a full time instructor until December of 2015. And made eighty thousand dollars, just so you guys know. In September of twenty sixteen, Riviera applied for a job with the ATC Healthcare Services, who placed her at St. Lexia. As the next year, she was responsible for assessing patients, identifying changes in patient conditions, performing medical treatment, and administrating medicines, including narcotics. Tells you, now I don't want to put the nursing companies out here, but I can now. And the person I'm talking about is no longer around. But they they claim they do drug tests. They claim to do the background checks. They do none of this. This is how far it got. Is that she was? She taught at a school. She had other nursing jobs. She got an eighty thousand dollars and then went to a hospital in St. Louis. You can't blame the hospital in this situation. I don't know what ATC does. I don't know if they're just in St. Louis or what or Missouri, whatever it works. You can't blame St. Lexia here. Like they're gonna get sued and all that. They can move them suits. I would move them suits right to ATC because St. Lexia doesn't have to worry about it because. She was put there from an agency, from an ATC. So I'm surprised there's not more on it. You know, people are going to be suing left and right, and that's how it's going to work. But, but they didn't check her background or anything. And look at the, but it looks at the bitch, they probably didn't drug test her either. <laughs> so you have a person that you didn't do any background information working on patients. 
And this happens everywhere, people. I know. I I lived there for the last year until recently. So I know how it kind of works. And it's crazy to think that you could have somebody working on your elderly loved one, and they don't know what the fuck they're doing. I don't even know how she knew to get that in for. She obviously knew got far enough to where she could teach you the class. I don't know. She, she, she probably had nothing else to do. She probably out there doing dope. Getting high on meth, staying up for three, four days, and studied all this shit, and figured out somebody's identity and everything. And look, she made eighty thousand dollars teaching a school in Albuquerque, and they went to a healthcare provider service. They placed her in a hospital and didn't even know. But just funny story. All right, we're gonna take a break. We're gonna come right back with the hometown rundown right here on the Sports Blog, Greater STL Sports Network. <laughs> Sports Network, our both are here with you. To meet our both, JR, Greater Greater STL Sports Network, Greater STL SN. Two companies I always like to talk about. If you want to look into it, go to St. Louis Press Sports.com, Sling and Stitches.com. Just two people. Don't have nothing to do with this. Just like putting them out there. All right, let's get to the hometown rundown. STLFC played at home Saturday against the first place Sharks and Battery. The game was tied 0 0 until the 62nd minute when, on a free kick by Justin Porrello, crossed, he crossed one to Justin to Forrest Lasso, who had it in. Past goalkeeper Alan Grinnis for a 1 0 lead in the win. Grinnis made four saves total in the match. FC had seven shots with only one on goal. The loss put FC record at 3 2 and 3 with 11 points and seventh in the Asian division in the USL. FC's next game is on the road against the Temple Bay Rowdies on May 27th at 7.30. The River City Rascals open their 2017 season at home with a three-game series against the Norma Col- Col- Corn Belters. I'm having trouble today. Let's try to start over. The River City Rascals open their 2017 season at home with a three-game series against the Norma Corn Belters. In game one, the Rascals were shut out into a seventh inning and when they were down one nothing, when newcomer Brandon Thomas hit his first home run as a rascal to tie the game. In the bottom of the eighth, Josh Silver homer to give the Rascals a 2-1 lead. New closer Steven Swaggerty came in the ninth to close out the game for the win. Starter Hector Hernandez had a strong start going six and a third. One run on five hits with three walks and seven Ks. In game two, also went down to the wire. Going to the ninth in a tie game, the Rascals scored on a base winning walk to win the game. The Rascals drew 12 walks in the Game reliever Jason Zargowski, I didn't say that right, I promise you there, got the win after throwing a score this ninth inning. Stutter Dan Ludwig went eight on with one run, six hits, one walk of five Ks, and then no decision. Game three saw a little bit of scoring come around, but the Rascals lost 11 to 10. Josh Silver had three doubles in the game. And Mike Jarella also had three hits in the loss. The Rascals started the great three game series with the Evers. The Otters and home McCarthy Field on in O'Fallon, starting with a double header on the 17th of May. First game is at 5:05. Over the weekend, they'll travel on the road to play in the Southern Ellisville Miners. And the River City Rascals, or the River City Raiders, also play the game. But they didn't have nothing on it on the internet. You know, I can't help you out with that one. I don't know. What they expect, I don't know. You know, I seen actually a catch where a guy made a one-handed catch and got stuck and went over the board. And of course, from that sport, you, you can't deny that as a touchdown. But you know, get out here, support these teams. They need it. Support STL Prep Sports. Support Sling and Stitches. Celebrate the community. Now, as you've seen today, Boston's having a good week. Today they got the first pick. They beat Washington. Go play, they had, I don't know if it's the best week, they get to go play the Cavaliers. But they also got into some little something on social media. Mia Khalifa, 
who has known for trolling out and calling other athletes on social media, most notably Ole Miss quarterback Chad Kelly at the NFL Draft, and for jumping in her DMs during her 2016 season, and pretty embarrassing for the dude. Hopefully Chad's not remembered for this early situation, poor guy. Well, she jumped on there and decided to go at Isaiah Thomas. I guess, is he after this? Thomas Jr.? Like, I don't know. I just don't know. But let's have a big old, old Isaiah in around. I'm so scared. Yo, Isaiah, I'll let you touch my titties if you can reach them. Now, this doesn't make a lot of sense because, and this is a total sports for pro sports at time. I should get this in more often. This doesn't make a lot of sense when you realize that Thomas is 5'9", but Khalifa is 5'2". Now, it didn't matter because social media went ahead and roasted her for the tweet. Now, she's a former porn star who's basically become uh, a social media whore. She went from one whore job to another. Good for her. You know, make your money off on how you got to do it. Wasn't in porn for that long. I don't, I don't know why. I'm not familiar with her work in porn. I should have caught up on it, but you know, try to find a little bit about her. But she's 5'2", and she's gonna make fun of an NBA guy. She is a Wizards fan, and she's just trying to have fun, but they had a little fun. So, as usual, and comedy is usually hard on Twitter, but I give them this. You know, some first, one of the first tweets back at her was, she's used to being at that level. Which, if he's 5'9", she's 5'2", you get Get the gist. <laughs> and then they keep going. At least he'd be closer to touching your titties than your wizard's ever touching a title. Considering they sag to your knees, I don't think they'll have much trouble. When you try to make a, when you try to make a joke, but the CTE starts kicking you in from all the blows you took to the head over the year. Pretty fun. That's pretty good. He's too busy playing in meaningful games. Ovechkin has plenty of time, though. And she's a Washington fan. Someone said she's not interested in contracting AIDS. Why would Isaiah want to touch you? You're in the wrong industry. You're the chirp. <laughs> You're the dumb, dead ass, the ugliest porn star out there. That's pretty good, too. I, I don't know why I thought that was so funny. I'm sure he's getting much better offers than your show jokes are annoying. Too bad he can't get a height implant. He wouldn't want to touch them dirty things. Then they put a picture of uh, Michael Jackson face on uh, I, I, another guy. And that's all he put. Paint your titties on more. He can touch them in, He can touch them implants, though, which isn't that funny. But it's just, you see where it's going. Or some other blows she gained to her, to the head over the years. You like that idea. Washington's about to take a crazy L for this tweet. It's just funny, and then people went and researched her and all that. What's this funny? She's trying to become, I guess she thought she seems famous enough from uh, being a porn star that uh, that she can go have fun on Twitter. And Boston won the game, and, you know, she's just trying to have fun and whatever. But she is kind of a, she has fun with it. She might be going a little too far with it. It's not very smart to go out there and, you know, talk about a guy that's shorter than you and being in the porn industry. She probably shouldn't be talking about random crap like that. But, hey, I mean, let her have fun, you know, and people are going to have fun with it. And, you know, some people in there, I didn't read, I just read the first five that caught my eye, five or six. Many people, you know, were actually, like, taking it serious, like, oh, you know, like, I read one. Washington's going to take an L for that one, or Ovechkin has plenty of time. I don't know. I don't think she's dating a vegetarian or anything, but a little fun there. But to be a porn star and to talk about this stuff and then talk about, you know, he can touch your titty. But you're, you're, you're five too. He's, you know, don't make it. Start making sense. Don't put something down. And she had fun with the Chad Kelly thing when uh, he hit it up and, and I didn't know. You know, I'm not familiar with. It. She looked fine from the only pictures I've seen, but you know, now this is a crazy story. Houston Rockets star, and we're going to stick to basketball for a whole 30 seconds. <laughs> um, Golden State won. Uh, 2-0 in the series. There you go. Houston Rockets star had James Harden has reportedly been sued by Moses Malone Jr., who's the son of NBA legend Moses Malone. On Monday, Isaiah Carey of Fox 26 in Houston reported 
Malone Jr. filed a suit which alleged Harden paid a group of people twenty thousand in cash to attack and rob Malone at the View Live Strip Club last year. The suit says Harden was upset. Malone Jr. criticized the Rockets guards and shit in the charged children for a basketball cat and responded by orchestrating the robbery. Lawyer Harden's lawyer, Rusty Harden, said, I'm in Boston for deposition, so I haven't seen the petition, but I have previously discussed most of the allegations with James and others and totally comfortable with the allegations are untrue, per Perry. Unfortunately, I'm afraid that this is just another example of people shopping for a deep pocket when they find people actually responsible for have no money. <laughs> I mean, a card of ABC 13, a report reported in July 2016, police charged four men with aggravated robbery and a deadly weapon for the incident. According to Carter, Malone Jr. said he was robbed of 15000 in Julie. But Malone Jr.'s attorney, and this is what the stories I hate when they keep repeating the names, said he, his, Malone Jr.'s critical face of Harden basically referenced the fact that James Harden was charging 250 for a basketball cap per Carter. Wilfred Axford of the Houston Chronicle cited the documents in 2016, which said one of the attackers told Malone he disrespected Harden and that he needed to be punished after that. Now you see, if you heard the name Rusty Harden before, you would know, and I'm pretty sure I'm right on this. I'm just, just let me check it real, real quick. But I think he was the same guy that got uh, Roger Clemens off. So I don't think. I'm exactly right on that. Good for me. But you see that anybody's going to go through a big star. Now, if this happened to happen, and to charge $250 just in case of a basketball cap is ridiculous, but you don't just run things for free. Things don't just work out. You have to rent out the gym. You got to buy the equipment. I don't know how the basketball camp went. But this is funny. Most of Malone Jr. not probably not as good as his dad, obviously. You know, out here thinking, saying, you know, you're, you're trying to make a name for it. You're trying to do it in the wrong way. Because I don't think that uh, people know who the hell you are. <laughs> so why not, you know, say, hey, why not try to make a name for yourself? And why not say, hey, if now, you're, now you're in the news for something. And yeah, he does, you know, I'm looking up Moses Malone, all the same stories from uh, today's story. It's just funny to think that if you really think that he would that James Harden would even have I'm like why would he care? Like who cares what he said on Facebook or Twitter or anything like that? And it's just funny that, you know, this guy actually thought that like he he uh actually had something to do with it. And I just don't really think it's like it's something to make a name for yourself and you know, why not do it? And if it comes out true, that's crazy. And he said that one of the guys said that uh, you disrespected Harden, so you deserve what you're getting involved. But I don't really think that you know, people are going to say somebody else's name just because. And you know, you're you're just seeing something on Facebook, and who really said who's following Moses Malone Jr. on Facebook? That's what I want to know. Like, is this, is this a big story that I missed? I mean, I don't mind phone more than one junior around. It's just funny. You know, I, I've, I actually seen a story just effing around on the internet earlier, and I know I just seen it on Sports Center. I wonder if, the, if, if this is, has any truth to it. I mean, that's not, and why wouldn't James Harden just pay him to be quiet? And does he really think that, like, he's going to get a lot of money for this? For orchestrating a, like, for orchestrating a beatdown? Like, Twenty-five thousand. You know, so you lost fifteen thousand jewelry, and some guys already got charged for it. And is it really a big thing? Or are you just trying to get your name out there? That's pretty much what I see. I see it. somebody trying to get their name out there. And this story might also be the same thing. This is from uh, Barstool Sports. A federal judge has ruled that late-night co-host Conan O'Brien must head to court to face allegations of joke theft, a rarity in comedy, which accusations often fly but rarely advise past that. The plaintiff, Alex Cas. Kassenberg claims in a lawsuit filed in July 2015 that the writers from Conan O'Brien on the cable channel TBS listed five monologue jokes from his blog over the course of more than a year. O'Brien's team filed for a summary judgment for the case in the United States District Court for the Southern District of California. Judge Janice Senorito on Friday dismissed the claims 
for two of the jokes, but Mr. O'Brien must face the allegations for the other three. Among the examples Mr. Soderbergh cited on December 2nd, 2014, Mr. Kasselberg wrote, the University of Alabama Birmingham is shutting down its football program, to which the Oakland Raiders said, wait, you can do that? The next day on calling O'Brien, Mr. O'Brien said that during his mind, big news in the universe in the in sports, University of University of Birmingham has decided to get to its first row team. Yes, when they heard the news, the New York Jets fans said, wait, you can do that? It's something you can do? There was also another one that, uh, that I don't see in here, and I seen it earlier. But I kind of heard something the other day, like, is it really jokes that the viewers telling a joke? Now, Dan Cook, you know, it cost him his career. Because people started saying it and proved it. And when's the last time you heard from him? And it's kind of funny that it kind of took away. And I mean, they said he stole from Louis C.K. I don't know how he took from Carlos Marcia because there's a video of and you should watch this video. It's a hilarious video. Joe Rogan going on stage at one of the comedy clubs, I think in L.A., and getting on Carlos Marcia for stealing jokes. And basically, Carlos Marcia can't defend himself. And then they go outside and talk about it. And there's comments out here he actually stole jokes from that they show. And Carlos Marcia says, how did I steal a joke from a white guy that's at a black comedy club? And then Joe Rogan actually plays the clip. Or whoever knows. I'm pretty sure Joe Rogan plays the clip of the guy at the thing saying it's basically the same joke. And we sure we're spending a lot of them with Kathy Madigan and Patrice O'Neill. I don't know if you can say really that choke stealing is like a big thing. And I mean, if you're not a famous comic and you and your jokes get hurt, and you've said this before, I mean, you'd be kind of pissy. Like, if I was a Cassidy Madigan and Amy Schumer was stealing my jokes, I'd be pretty pissed. If Dayton Cook was getting specials way before Louis C.K. was, which he was, I'd be pretty fucking pissed. Carlos Messina, another guy who was stealing jokes from comics you never heard of, I'd be pretty effing pissed. So I could see why they were mad. And this is funny that you seem to see this happen a lot now. Like, people are finally calling people out on it. And I don't know if it would happen with the Joe Rogan thing or the Dan Cook thing. What happened? I mean, Joe Rogan actually gets on stage, gets in this guy's face, gets a mic. They have his mic off for a while, and he's just yelling and screaming, going nuts about it. And then finally, they turned his mic. I don't even know if they ever turned Joe Rogan's mic on. They basically shut down Carlos Messina, where Carlos they go outside. And Carlos Messina is getting played by a bunch of other comments just standing around. And then he tries to say, uh, I didn't steal a joke from this guy. Well, how did I steal a joke from this guy, from a Jewish guy at a blah, blah, and then, they, and then they show the clip of where it actually happened. I don't know if they showed the clip to Marcia. But, I mean, this, this is not right for this blogger to get a name. I mean, I don't know. I mean, people can see this anyway. You, you know, put the shit out there. And it's bound to have something happen. And for, you have a team of writers on these Tonight Show. I don't know what TBS is really going with. I don't know what Conan O'Brien. Funny that stand-up comedians can't write their own shit. And Conan O'Brien's been through this with NBC. He's been through a while. You think this, somehow you figure out to come up with your own joke. But then this writing team who says that does nothing. Just around blogs that ain't looking for jokes. I mean, you can come up with enough jokes just looking at Twitter and Facebook. To be honest with you. And I kind of like that people are, you know, going to going to the bat about this. And Amy Schumer, Schumer at times defends herself, really hasn't done it. There's videos of her even staying still from Dave Chappelle, which you're not going to remember to the new fans of comedy. A joke from Dave Chappelle in 2005. You ain't going to, you hear in 2016, you're not going to, you know, you, nobody's going to know. You know, that's what they're thinking. I mean, Patrice O'Neill, who knows that guy is? Dan Cook at the time, who's Louis C.K.? Now Louis C.K. is real big and famous, so it's going to be hard to steal any stuff from him. But it's just funny that it, that stuff kind of happens. Like, you, you're a comedy guy, and you can't come up with comedy for yourself. And the Conan O'Brien's been through the layer with this before. I mean, does this hurt his show? I don't know, because I don't even know if people watch his show. But if you're doing this for so long, you would think that once in a while... You would be able to, after a while, come up with something that, you know, people would like to hear. I mean, and most of these monologues, it's just jokes about the president. You don't think that you can come up with this stuff on your own? 
I just don't understand it. I mean, and yeah, I mean, he was on Conan O'Brien on Jack and Saturday Night Live. He did a lot of work with The Simpsons. Right up with The Simpsons. So he, I don't see how he's not sitting around and like not noticing me kind of thing. And not making his comedy better. I mean, obviously he's not that great because he couldn't stay on. He first replaced Jay Leno and Jay Leno wasn't going nowhere. As you've seen what they did is they put Jay Leno on at 9. And they caught O'Brien on it. In 10, well, people were. In America, you used to, they used to, so Jay Leno got more credit for that, and then, now finally, Jimmy Fallon, you know, told a different way, a whole different style of doing it, well, you, you know, it just doesn't make any sense, but then he's been doing this, and he claims to be a writer, that he can say all this and that, and you, you gotta steal stuff from other people to become funny or smart, and that the writers out there, you know, they're going around and looking for people's stuff, and they think they, they, people aren't going to catch it. What they do? They're not stupid when you hear something that you said before. And now that, and this guy write he wrote some he writes a blog, so now he has to prove him right. And they just missed some of it. So I mean it's probably not the same joke. That's just funny to me that your writers can't even help you out. And this is and he's on TBS and I guess he was thinking nobody heard the shit or nobody watches it. I mean, that's where I would think. Like, if you ask most people where that happened to the. What happened to the Conan O'Brien show, I'm guaranteeing that they. 90% of them can't tell you where it's at. Like, what channel's on? Maybe it'll be on TV. But you're in a day and age now where people try to find this underground shit. I mean, look at everything. Every sport. I mean, the Bellatories of the world. In sports, but a lot of these underground comics are a lot famous. Than you think? I mean, it's, that's where most of them come. Most, I mean, a lot of them are coming out with freaking podcasts now, and that's how people find them. That doesn't make any sense if you, you know, in the thing of basically the internet, that someone's not going to find it somewhere. You, you could probably type in that joke somewhere and find out that it was on a blog at first, and not that. He's gonna do that, but you have a, you know, you would think that the writers would do that. I don't know, and that sports one's not as bad as the one I seen earlier. That was a bad one. That's the only one they, of course, put in here. And yeah, I'll give you the joke because I'm pretty sure that it was on this right here. And this is the benefit of my show is, see, I'm, tr I'm trying to work things in here, and the internet's so effed up here. That it doesn't quite go the way I wanted it to go. But this guy's wrote from Jay Leno before. But it's, I mean, it's kind of funny that you know they would even think. So I mean, of course, I'm not gonna find the joke, but it's just it doesn't make any sense, and it's actually. From a different site, I can't quite remember it now. So, who gives a fuck? But I mean, that joke was way. I mean, it was a blatant steal. So it's funny that I mean, people should take it. I mean, if I was a Catholic Madigan, who's I know where, because I look at this freaking St. Louis stuff. But it doesn't make any sense. That you can actually read this stuff now. And look at the guy. Here's a Tom Brady joke. Tom Brady said he wants to be. And the Catholic, the, the joke I'm talking about is a Catherine Jenner joke. So we'll go, we'll go both. Tom Brady said he wants to give his MVP truck to the man who won the game for the Patriots. So enjoy the truck, Pete Carroll. Tom, and I was in the other guy. Brian says. Tom Brady said he wants to give his truck. That he's going to be Super Bowl MVP to the guy who won the Super Bowl for the Patriots. Which is nice. I think that's, I think that's nice. I do, yes. So Brady's giving his truck to see us coach Pete Carroll. He changed it up a little bit. But here you go. This is the one that's pretty much on it. Three towns in three towns. Two in Texas, one in Tennessee have Shree Sanders, Bruce Jenner. Now have they have the consent to change them to Caitlin. And now and one will have to change the name from Colby Sack to Colby Sackless. He says, Bro Brian, some cities 
that have streets named as Bruce Jenner are trying to change the street names to Caitlyn Jenner. If you lived on Bruce Jenner, call the sack would not be called Saint. They would not be called called no sack. And I guess these are three jokes right there. The Washington Monument is ten inches shorter than the previous thought. You know that winter has been cold when a monument suffers from shrinkage. Ha, that's pretty funny actually. Yesterday, surveyors announced that the Washington Monument is actually ten inches shorter. The one that's premature in quarter. Yeah, of course, the moment explaining the shrinkage on the cold weather. So you see here and there. Right? But things happen and it, it works out that way. But did you write, you, you've seen this stuff and these guys are, you know, there hasn't been enough of it. The Joe Rogan thing, who has a podcast, a Black Star podcast, and talks about it a lot with other comics. Talked about the Amy Schumer thing with Hannibal Burris, who also has his own podcast, but he was on the Joe Rogan and Hannibal and Amy Schumer are friends. So, I mean, people see this stuff. And on that one, they see it because it's Joe Rogan. And this one, it's written down right in front of you. And they took it from him. And that's just, you know, it's just messed up. The people can't come with their own stuff. Like, if I was going to come, and I'm right at the top of it, I'm sorry, I took off. This is the top of the Washington Pro. Demick actually dies in Democratic. Democracy, Democracy dies in darkness. That's pretty funny. See, jokes. No, they're serious. But democracy dies in darkness. I am horrible. I should have known that right as I read it. That's pretty good. Don't steal that joke, people. Democracy dies in darkness. I'm not stealing it. That's not mine. That's the Washington Post. Don't steal it. But it doesn't make any sense that you that people could take from somebody else and think it's okay. It doesn't quite make any sense that Mia Khalifa talks about Isaiah Thomas being short when she's shorter than he is. But hey, to each their own. But that's stupid. All right, that's going to do it for the sports blog. For Paul and Lori, RIP. For Jake, Maddie, Zach, and Joe, it's been the sports blog live on gstln.wix.com slash 314 on ustream.tv backslash channel access rbojr and only on the greater STL sports network. Love you, Grant.